What's going on, everybody? This is going to be a complete and total freestyle episode. This is going to be basically me going on a tangent because there's a lot of energy that's going on right now in this world. And a lot of people are feeling overwhelmed and there's a lot of fear and chaos going on. And I just want to let you know, I'm here to be a voice and to take a stand. And it's not the cool, trendy thing to do right now. However, there are a lot of people who feel voiceless and feel beat down by life and are tired of feeling shame for how they love. People that are gay, people that are trans, people that are lesbian, people that are non-binary, people of color, you know, people that are told by the Bible, which was written thousands of years ago, which was mistranslated, which was misquoted, which was edited to, to feed into somebody else's agenda, feel guilt, feel that God doesn't love them as they are. Please. Times are changing, my friend. God is real. I've experienced God. I know that there are different gods and goddesses. I have felt the power. I have access to that. And I'm here to share that with you because we need to be more vocal with who we are and we need to share more information so we can tap into how powerful we are. All right, you ready? Here we go. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Scorpio Rising. And we are going to get right into what we are grateful for because there's a lot to be grateful for. I am definitely grateful for my community. I'm grateful for having people around me that when I get stressed out and when I get anxiety, that they come into my life and tell me what to focus on and remind me of the tools and the power that I have. I'm definitely grateful for the guests that I've had on my podcast. If you have not heard the prior episodes, if this is your first time listening to this podcast, uh, I highly recommend you go back and listen to the episodes with guests. Uh, Katie Chinakis is very very intelligent and had a lot of interesting things to say. Um, I also recently did a powerful podcast with a beautiful human being by the name of Anthony Najera, who uh, was able to share his experiences and what it's like to be uh, incarcerated while LGBTQ. So I'm grateful for my guests. I'm grateful for my community and I'm grateful for my mental health and balance, which is really what I wanted to talk about today in this episode. This is going to be a short, sweet, and powerful episode uh, because I realize all of the people pretty much in my life right now are saying the same thing. And this is what that thing is that they are saying. (sighs) I have noticed in the past few days that it feels like everything is coming at once, where it's like I had all of these blessings and then all of these things that were stressful that came to me at the same time, and it was very overwhelming. And I started talking with other people and started listening to other people. And they were all saying the same thing of like, man, this is stressful. Um, You know, it's difficult to deal with. And, you know, I had to communicate because I believe in the power of vulnerability that, you know, I was overwhelmed. And thankfully, I have people in my life that can say, this isn't do or die, this isn't life or death. And then I was able to get into a healthy place and to find balance and to let go of all the expectations and stresses that I had. So I really wanted to share that. That, you know, while a lot of times it feels like stuff happens to us and it might not feel fair, it might not feel like we deserve to have this thing, we might have expectations of how our life is, that in reality, it's actually a blessing, that it's actually something that's leveling us up. And we need to be able to step into that power and say, I am stepping into this power. I am receiving this. I am perceiving this as a blessing. I am ready for whatever life has to offer me that when we don't get the job interview, we thank God because there's a better opportunity. When somebody shows that they're not loyal to us, we say, thank God that person showed their true side so that we can move forward. When we tell people our ideas and they laugh at us or say that we think that we're better than people or anything that has a negative connotation to it, we thank God that they showed their true side so that we can move forward and have people in our life who uh, celebrate and uplift us. So I wanted to talk about that because I know, you know, I've been doing a lot of work, self-development work on this, and I forget from time to time that, you know, not everybody's in that same kind of headspace. And really the people that I'm doing this for is for those of us that are curious, that are seekers, that are looking to be better people and want more out of our life. And, you know, we want to have that community. And, And a lot of times, 
We're operating from places of abandonment. We're operating from places of not feeling good enough. And then life comes to us and people communicate to us a certain way. And then we look at that and we say, wow, like now I'm going to go back into victim mode. And that's just not what we're about this year. We're about leveling up. We're about pushing forward and moving past the anxieties. So what I have learned is that when I can do things like deep breathe, when I can do things like saying, I'm just not going to do this thing today, that when I uh, position myself in a way that I can have freedom to uh, schedule my day and my life, that I can say no to things. And when people come to me with different opportunities and they say like, I want you involved in this thing, if it doesn't align with who I am or if I'm simply tired or burnt out, that I can say no, I can say thank you kindly. However, at this time I'm going to pass. Um, If I'm feeling tired or exhausted, I can communicate that. However, at the same time, I don't need to. It is not my responsibility to have to to constantly tell people why I'm saying no to different opportunities. Uh, There's a balance between that. However, at the same time, this is for people, this specific episode is for people that are tired, that are powerful people, that are powerful individuals that might be going through something. You might be going through a breakup. You might be going through stress. You might be going through a complete and total personality change. You might feel like everything is just unstable and uncertain. And so this is the episode for you, for you to reclaim your power. I had to start realizing that I needed to cut people out of my life. I really needed to start saying no to different people. People would come at me with these different opportunities and I would show my, my true self. I would show exactly who I am. And, uh, they would, they would make fun of me. They would make fun of the fact that, you know, I'm into spirituality. They would make fun of the fact that I wanted to get a healing, that I wanted to hang out with the shaman. And I had to cut those people out of my life. I had people in my life when I was in high school that would make fun of me, that would make fun of my lifestyle, that would make fun of, you know, like my family, my mom, like me being raised in an LGBTQ home. And I had to eliminate those people. I realized that I had people in my life that were jealous. And that was a difficult one for me. I realized that people would like my energy and they wouldn't know what to do with my energy, but they just wanted to keep my energy around. So I had to cut those people out of my life. And that's what I'm encouraging to you. Look at the people that are in your life right now. Are the people in your life celebrating you? Are they bringing stress to you? When you're sharing who you naturally are, do they make fun of you or do they put you down. And, and that's something to look at. Go into, your, go into your telephone right now. Look at the contacts in your phone and see who have you talked to in a while? Who have you not talked to in a while? Who have you interacted with? Who have you not interacted with? You know, are these people adding value? Do you need them in your life? Because if you have people in your life that you're not interacting with and not communicating with, you need to just remove them because you know why? It makes room for new people, for amazing new people that are like, yo, I love you. Wow, you're so eccentric. I have a guy in my life that's an amazing human being (laughs) and he sent me an article and was like, I think you're manic. You know, and I'm like, cool. Albert Einstein would have been labeled as autistic in 2021. So like, I got to be something. It's good to know that that's what I am. And I'm a genius. You know, the guy still likes me. And, and wants to, you know, do business and wants to create opportunities. Um, the people in my life that know how I operate know that I'm intense and I'm talking fast because I'm excited about life because I overcame a lot of anxiety today. I was not feeling like uh, doing what I needed to do. And I was feeling like all of the responsibilities and all the pressures were on me. I felt like I had to do 18 things at once and that I have all these huge deadlines. And, um, you know, it was, it was, difficult uh, for me to uh, to confront that. And still at the same time, I did what I needed to do. I have um, an amazing friend who has a company that I also recently did a podcast about, A New Alchemy. And I'm going to include the link in uh, the description. A New Alchemy um, has a product called Ormus. And I take Ormus and Ormus decalcifies your third eye so that when you're dealing with different situations, your intuition taps in and is like, hey, hi, how are you doing? This isn't good for you. Or hey, hi, you should focus. You should refocus your energy in this direction. So I have Ormus for when I need to decalcify my third eye and tap into my intuition. I can do breathing techniques where when I'm stressed out because I have 18 different things that I need to do that are all blessings, then I can slow down and I can breathe and I can say, I know that three deep breaths 
are actually going to slow down my brain. So when we take three deep breaths, we actually slow down our brain. And the reason why we need to slow down our brain is because we need to get oxygen into our minds. There is a lot going on right now. There is a lot of stimulation that is going on right now. There's a lot of changes that's going on right now. There's a lot of fear that is going on right now. And we need to know how to navigate through that because beyond the fear, guess what? There are blessings. There are blessings that are going on. And what we need to do is we need to know how powerful we are. We need to know the strength that we possess. And when we remove people from our life that don't get who we are, when we remove people, when we share who we truly are and they laugh or they roll their eyes or we know them, they're constantly following us on social media and they never interact and they just they just keep on scrolling and they don't show us love. We have to refocus our energy. We have to put more self-love into ourselves. We have to nurture the seeds that are in our lives so that we can tap into how powerful we are because there are people who love us, who like our energy, and they don't know what to do with it, right? So go into your phone, go into your social media, look in your contacts, look at the people that you know and ask yourself, like, are you really having people around you that celebrate you and uplift you? Or do you have people in your life that have just been around for 10 years that are listening to what you're doing and they don't get it? I had three different people in my life within a time span of two years that told me that I thought that I was better than them. And it's exhausting, Explaining. I'm like, yo, like I'm independently creating a podcast. I'm independently building a music career. I'm independently building clients so that I can have a job and, and do things that I love and enjoy. And you're over here miserable in life, upset that, that life didn't hand you everything that you wanted. Like I'm busting my, you know what, just to get to where I want to be. So I have to like keep myself distance from these people and say, I love you. However, I'm not going to give my energy to you because my energy is sacred. I can manifest. I can generate. I had an episode on my podcast where I spoke with uh, Sonia Pateco, who talked about the human design. And, you know, I'm a manifesting generator. And I've learned that when I have people around me that celebrate me and love me as I am, then I can move mountains and I can make magic happen. And so I want to encourage that to you. I want to encourage you to keep people around you who celebrate you. If you're weird, if you are different, if you love differently, if you don't love according to a book that was written 2000 years ago, then that's cool. Keep people around you that understand that God loves you as you are. Keep people people around you that are like, yo, you might talk too much or you might never talk at all. However, I love you. I love your spirit. I love your soul. I love your vibe. Okay. When it comes to social media, what hashtags are you looking at? What are you looking at? Do you look at fight compilations? Do you look at people constantly just fighting each other and, and chaos? Are you supporting blogs and, and, and media that's promoting divorce and chaos and fear? And then you go out into the world and you wonder why you look at it and you're like, life is crazy? No. Or are you looking at hashtags that are focused on a specific thing that you have an interest in? Do you like cars? Do you want to be a nurse? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Are you 70 years old and you want to start being an influencer on TikTok? Anything is possible. You just need to know where your energy is going and you need to know the people that are around you. And this is a difficult thing to do. People are so attached to the human connection that they don't want to keep loyal people in regards to the direction where they're going. It's one thing when you've had somebody who's a family member who's loved you for so long or you've been in a relationship for so long where this person has seen you grow. However, if you don't have people in your life that get the direction where you're going, where you're like, I need to take meetings at one o'clock in the morning. I need to work for free. I need to bag groceries. I need to do whatever it takes to get to where I want to go. And they're talking you down or they're talking you out of it. Or you're like, I'm going to create something that's never been done before. And they tell you that it's impossible or they roll their eyes and get quiet. Remove them non-emotionally. Like you are an alien coming from another planet and you have never met them before. Because as soon as I did that, I started getting amazing people in my life. And I'm talking about people that are rich. I'm talking about people that are poor. I'm talking about people that are black, white, gay, trans, every single thing, Christian, atheist, everything, all different walks of life. I have fantastic people in my life. I have people that show me things while everyone else is focused on the left versus right and, and, and racism and all these things. I have people in my life that offer solutions now. This isn't me bragging or saying I'm some amazing person. You should swipe up for my free webinar. This is me saying to you that you need to look 
at the people that are in your life. Look at the contacts that you have. Look at the thoughts that you are thinking. Look at the words. Listen to the words that you are speaking. Listen to the words that people are speaking around you. When you're living your day-to-day life, are people complaining? Are they saying, man, this is tough. I don't like this thing. This is boring. This is hard. This is difficult. I can't do it on a regular, regular basis, like every single day or every time you talk with them? Or are you surrounded by people that are like, man, you know what? This is difficult. However, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to do it or like this is difficult. However, I'm going to take care of this and you do this and we'll compromise and we'll make it happen together. See, that's the difference is that you need to find people in your life that offer solutions. I've had people that pop in and out of my life that that only focus on the problems. And there is always something to be mad at. There is always a reason to be upset. Okay. I could focus on the fact that I can barely go outside. I could focus on the fact that I'm I'm looking to, you know, take my career to the next level and my career is not where I want to be. I could look and I could start blaming every single person in my life for not helping more or doing more more to focus on my career. But then I have to ask myself, what am I doing? Where can I improve? What company am I keeping? You know? And then, and then when I start to ask those kinds of questions and I remove the other person from this equation, then I can actually hold myself accountable and I can actually get peace of mind and I can actually have freedom instead of waiting for this other person to change or waiting for this person to be like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You are right. Because guess what? You deal with yourself on a day-to-day basis. You deal with yourself on a normal basis. You know your thoughts. Other people don't know what you're up to. Other people do not know what you are doing. Other people do not know how brilliant and how powerful you are. And other people live their life and expect for you to fit into their mold, okay? This goes for people that, again, I wanna focus on this because I've just started realizing how much more needs to be spoken on about this. Um, I'm tired of homophobia. I'm exhausted with racism. I want to focus. I'm going to deal more with racism. I really want to focus on homophobia because it's something that's like not cool to talk about. And then you get people that say Hollywood has an agenda. There's an agenda to to include people. And then people want to be included themselves, but then they're mad that other people want to be included. Okay. Everybody deserves to have a seat at the table. When people are being homophobic, when people are being transphobic, you're you're ignorant to the fact that God loves everyone. And if you don't believe in God, that's cool. You know, but it's like people have these people have these concerns. You go onto forums, you go onto websites, and people say things like, Oh, look, look at this movie, look at this scene. They're showing two women kissing or two men kissing, or they're showing an interracial couple. Like there's an agenda there. Yeah, you have an agenda. Your agenda is happiness. Like I don't, I don't know why this is even a conversation in 2021. And then meanwhile, and not to go too far down the rabbit hole, but you have people that are atop that make the, the decisions for us, not Joe Biden, not Donald Trump, but like the people who actually below them, who actually pass the laws that don't care about the fact that human drinking water is a human right. And you have people like the CEO of Nestle says that drinking water is not a human right. Okay. This is insanity. And people don't want to talk about this because it's not cool. And yes, I go off on tangents because it's frustrating and people focus so much on fear and on chaos. And you buy into companies, you buy into the car, Kardashians, you buy into these people that that sell you products and sell you a vision that is not tangible. And then you and then you create broken homes and your kids grow up in chaos and you and you have this mentality that like you can replace somebody in a relationship. Oh, I don't like you. I don't like the way that you're communicating. I don't like what you're doing. So so now I'm gonna replace you. Excuse me? No. No, we have difficult conversations with people. We get to know how they think and how they believe. And then we put ourselves in their shoes. And this doesn't happen in popular culture. It it is exhausting because we don't even think about it. And yet it keeps popping up. We keep reading articles. We keep being frustrated. We keep having other people tell us that their way is better. Their way is better. No, your way is your way. And that works for you. My way is my way. And that works for me. If you are a Bible thumper and you believe that everyone who doesn't go to church every single Sunday and, and, and everyone who isn't heterosexual and everyone who is this way and that way, is just going to go down below and stay with the devil and for, for all eternity. That's cool. You are new to this planet. Maybe you don't believe in reincarnation. It is a real thing. There are documented cases for it. And it is a fact 
factual thing. You are brand new to this world and the world is scary to you. So everything that doesn't fit into your realm, you have to attack. You have to attack. I had somebody recently, I just got onto TikTok and I don't know why. Nobody told me about how awesome TikTok is because what's cool about TikTok is you can actually react with people when people say ignorant things. So I got my first troll on TikTok. I, I was able to, instead of just dropping a comment that maybe they won't see, I can actually do a whole video on that. So I've always wanted to have a job where I get paid to um, destroy illusions. And now I have that. There's a balance with all of this. People have, everyone has an agenda. Everyone has an idea that if people live this way or that way, that the world would be a better place. If you don't agree with somebody, try to understand that person has been abused, that person has been taught, that person is fearful, that person is mad at the world, that person, you know, had to go through things that you probably couldn't even imagine and they hate themselves 10,000 times more than you do. That person was raised by somebody who was racist. That person was raised by somebody who was homophobic and, you know, everyone's insecure and just spewing their ideas because they just want for everybody else to be like, yep, that's a good idea. So the fact is, is that people learn these things. They learn this behavior and then they go on spreading, you know, negative energy and then we actually react to it. Let that person be who they are, okay? Have difficult conversations with people and be curious instead of being angry that somebody doesn't believe in the same God that you believe in or love the same way you do. However, with what I was saying earlier, I really want to focus on this. People need to stand up more and celebrate people who are LGBTQ for people that are told that they're wrong, that they're a sin. Again, I recently did a podcast. You can check it out. It's with Anthony Nehera, and he's talking about something that's not cool. People that go to jail that are incarcerated, that are LGBTQ, have to deal with things that normal people don't have to deal with. And chances are, if you're listening to this, you haven't been incarcerated, and that's cool. People look at what the police do, and they think that it's terrible, and it is terrible. And then you get incarcerated, and you see there is a lot of chaos that goes on that isn't the normal kind of chaos that you experience when you have freedom, okay? We, we need to have compassion for people instead of just standing by while, you know, people spew hate and negativity. And we need to look at the companies that own corporations that allow this to happen. Again, switching topics, because I just want to go on a tangent. I just want to keep channeling the energy and just stay with it. Stop buying products from Nestle. Stop buying products from Nestle. The CEO of Nestle is not a good person. The CEO of Nestle, and you can Google this, the CEO of Nestle said that drinking water is not a human right, period. The people that are in Flint, Michigan are still dealing with it. Their kids have brain damage from water, from drinking water. And it's not cool to talk about because you have all of these different stimulations and all of this, these new releases and music and, and, and reality shows that distract you from the fact that our world is being run by people who don't care about humanity, okay? This is not a conspiracy. I'm not somebody who goes down that rabbit hole and, and, and all of that. I stay educated and I deal with facts, okay? We need to know who we are supporting. We need to understand that supply and demand is a real thing. If you are tired of how entertainment is, then stop watching these channels. If you are tired of people like Takashi 6 9 in hip hop music, you need to stop clicking articles with his name on it. You need to stop watching videos, period, point blank, at all that have his name on it. If you are clicking articles and you are writing in the comment section of how stupid the article is, guess what? You just made that website money. Congratulations. And that's what I'm getting at is that we need to, this whole episode is focused so that we can know where our energy is going. If you are surrounded by people that are inauthentic, if you are somebody who was born into money, the chances are you have conversations to keep people with you that also have money. And that's fine. Money and abundance are a fantastic thing. However, a lot of times in these communities, you get a lot of people that are deeply insecure secure. And then you find yourself around people that just say yes to everything. And then you find yourself spiraling out and nobody truly cares about you. We need to understand that there are good people and there are people who have other intentions and race and sex and, and, and class have absolutely nothing to do with it. This is a human thing. I have friends that are millionaires and I have friends that are janitors that sweep the floor. I have traveled and I will tell you this from somebody who goes in many different circles because people just 
stay with their tribes, they stay with their people, they stay with their groups, and they just keep revalidating that this is how life is. This is how life is. People that are poor have unhealthy beliefs about people that are rich. People that are one race have unhealthy beliefs about other people. And, and we need to be able to be curious about how other people think. We need to be curious about how other people love. We need to understand that hurt people hurt people. And we need to stop supporting certain companies if we really want to make a lasting change once and for all to stop the foolishness. Literally, if you support art, if you support businesses, if you support families that are ethical, that have values all across the board, all of these other companies have to change. They all have to make the change. And that is a major, major, major fact. That is a simple thing to look at. If you simply support people that are doing good things in this world, in your community, and you, and you help them make money, all the other companies say, well, I guess people like that. So I guess we'll have to do that. Perfect example is McDonald's. McDonald's and Burger King are now making plant-based burgers because enough people were like, hey, I'm tired of eating you know, meat that comes from animals that are suffering, that are slaughtered. That, 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 that scream out and then we put that energy energetically into our body and then we wonder why we feel terrible. And they're like, all right, cool. We'll come up with something for you because we want your money. It is literally money. So if you can understand this concept and I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm just gonna let this rock and put it out there as it is. I just wanna encourage you, look at the people, look at the products, look at the beliefs, look at the context, look at the concepts that are going into your life. Look at the people that are around you. How long have you had people in your life that don't get you? How long have you been around people that are exhausting, that are draining? How long? Really? How long have you been in a situation where you're tired of it and then life keeps on beating you down? Maybe life isn't beating you down. Maybe your perspective can be reevaluated and you can start saying to yourself from now on, this is what I did to me literally just the other day. I just, I just committed to this. And I said, everything that happens to me right now is going to be a blessing. And guess what? March 1st, when all of that happened, I got blessed. I got tired of how things were. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to start taking massive action. And I started making phone calls. I started removing people and I started educating myself. The next day, blessings. I'm telling you, this is real. You are 100% responsible for your life, for your outcomes. You are 100% accountable for everything. Not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend, not your mom, not your dad, nobody else but you. You take a look at yourself in the mirror. You tell yourself, moving forward, I'm going to be more responsible for myself. I'm going to stop blaming other people for everything. I'm going to hold myself 100% accountable. And anything that happens in my life moving forward is a blessing. I just wanted to share this. I just wanted to channel something. A lot of times it's more thought out and I just got a little inspired by how everything is in this world. And a lot of people in my life that are powerful people are like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. What can I do? And I went through that myself. And, you know, thankfully, again, there are tools, there are ways that we can overcome uh, these anxieties and these stresses. And it is simply by having better people around us and by holding ourselves 100% accountable and dedicating and committing ourselves to, you know, putting in the work so that one year later, five years later, 10 years later, 50 years later, that we'll enjoy life as we continue to grow and elevate instead of being frustrated and being in the same patterns. We must make smarter choices. We must know who we're supporting. We must know where our money is going and where our energy is going. We are powerful, powerful beings. We are made in an image of God. We are made in the image of a powerful all-knowing being. This is my belief. If it's not yours, that's cool. However, even if you don't even believe in God, you believe in God as you're an atheist, anything doesn't matter. We are powerful, powerful beings. There are people in this world that can tap into that power. And it is simply because they don't fall into these limiting beliefs. When people tell them that they can't do it, they laugh at it because they know their truth and they see the vision. Some of us haven't had that opportunity because we have been beat down and we're in this life to learn different lessons, okay? Roll with me. Cut people out of your life. Pretend you are an alien. Wake up the next day and just pretend that you are brand new to this earth and just look at the people that are in your life. Start fresh. Cut out the energy that is in moving mountains and making magic with you. 
all right, I'm going to go edit 18 different things. I'm going to go keep on taking massive action and I'm going to deep breathe all the way through. I love you guys. And I want to just extend this one more time. If you need a friend, if you need somebody to hang there with you and just to say like, yo, this is crazy right now. I need help. I got you. I'm a friend. I'm an ally. And I hope that you know that comes from the heart because I know what it's like when you feel hopeless, when you feel helpless. I've, I've been there. Once you level up and you get those tools and you have that inner peace the anxieties and the stress doesn't go away. However, you have the tools that you can access. And if you don't have people in your life that are helping you, that are elevating you, you got a friend in me. All right. I love you because if we can hate people, we don't know, we sure can love them. Take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. And I wish you the best. And if you get stressed out, <sighs> take three slow, deep breaths and just slow down your mind. Peace. Is that all you got? Is that all you got? Don't go.